Let us run together to the thrilling final moment of revenge. Reverend Dr. Holly Namokli, United Methodist Church, translator, Mrs. Irene Park, reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namokli, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of doctor in ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowan Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for minister. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. This week's lecture for Band Live on the series of Excavating Gems from the Bible was You Prepare a Feast for Me in the Presence of My Enemies, Psalm 23, verse 5. When Israel won a battle, they used to have a festival of sharing the booty in front of their bound captives. Supposedly, sharing the booty was so much fun and full of joy. It is told that the most joyous time is when sharing the spoils before the enemies. Can you imagine? We can see this clearly in the following scriptures as well. And when he had brought him down, there they were, spread out all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. 1 Samuel 30, verse 16. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Isaiah 9, verse 3. I rejoice at your words, one who finds great treasure. Psalm 119, verse 162. Apparently, this is the description of a flock grazing in the green pasture with the protection of a shepherd. The wild animals can only watch from somewhere hidden because the shepherd is protecting the flock. We cannot quite feel it at the skin level, but other scriptures assist our understanding. Haman bullied the Israelites, but he and his ten sons were hanged on the gallows he had set up instead. And when we see the Israelites commemorate the Feast of Purim, we can emphasize the thrill as well. Then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Sushan to do again tomorrow, according to today's decree, and let Haman's ten son be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Sushan, and they had hanged Haman's ten sons. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled town celebrated the fourteenth day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday, and for sending presents to one another. Esther 9, verse 13, 14, and 19. Then, who would be the enemy? There are so many adversaries in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, Satan is portrayed as the enemy. Satan plants the weeds and harasses people, but you might not feel it so keenly as to what the enemy is doing in detail. I once asked a person why she is so addicted to dramas, and her answer was because of the thrill she feels at the final revenge. When we see a gratifying revenge, it is like drinking carbonated beverage. Many people are interested in how the revenge is done. Revenge ought to be thrilling, delightful, and gratifying. But watching the agony and suffering of the good until the moment of revenge is quite frustrating. Even in faith life, we applaud to the thrilling revenge in the book of Revelation. Christ will give us the final victory because the victory of Christ is the victory of the saints. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. 
there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelations 21, verse 4. And I had a dream last night. The story is as follows. I used to have seven very close friends during my junior high years. These seven friends came to the States to visit me. I went to the airport with great excitement to pick them up, but they did not come out of the gate no matter how long I waited. I looked for them here and there and finally found out that they had already gotten off the plane and were waiting somewhere else. I ran to them calling out, my friends, but they were all looking at me somewhat distantly. So I said, why are you looking at me like that? It's me, Holly. But they kept staring at me as if I were a total stranger. So I asked my closest friend, what's the matter? Something must have happened. Have you heard a bad rumor about me? Then they said they had read an article about my immoral affair in the newspaper. I screamed. You don't know me. That's a fake news. If you believe such a rumor and ignore me, I will never consider you as my friends. Do you think such ill rumor can damage our friendship of 50 years? Can't you trust me? As I was screaming, I woke up. After the dream, I was in great shock. Such misunderstanding can break up the 50 years of friendship. At that very moment, I remembered Satan, the enemy who starts from giving the suspicions and eventually sever the relationships. I realized distrust, which is the work of Satan, is the most dangerous thing in the world. I asked the Lord, is this the enemy as in Psalm 23? And the Lord explained about the enemy. Do you know what can break up a relationship most easily? It is called distrust. And there is another thing which is called jealousy. When suspicion and jealousy are planted among pastors, marital relationships, friends, between politicians and the people, it will cause fatal destruction in the relationship. That is Satan's talent and weapon. If the arrow of suspicion is launched, 100 out of 100 relationships will be cracked. Add alienation and distorted information on top of that. Then separation is for sure and the chance of unifying becomes none. Such distrust was the first incident which separated Adam and Eve from me. You have experienced in your dream how desperate that feeling is. The scary work of Satan, the enemy, is breaking the relationship of trust. If broken once, it is difficult to restore like a water glass. Distrust and suspicion are weapons of Satan, which can break up churches and families. Because of that, Adam and Eve were thrown out of the Garden of Eden where they could have lived happily. And now humanity is walking on the journey of suffering and doubt all their lives without peaceful relationship with me. Do you know how much you have lost because of Satan's gift of disbelief and distrust? When you think of it that way, you will realize the enemy is the destroyer of your life and you will come to your senses. Your biggest challenge is not being able to believe and trust me. You ought to listen to my guidance like a child but you listen to Satan more than you listen to me. You fix your heart on the spooky stories which Satan made up, whereas you do not trust my word. The reason you get scared from hearing those stories is because you believe them. And the reason you do not become joyful from reading the scriptures is because you do not believe the word. This is your reality. You do not receive all of my presents, which were intended for you and ended up living painful life, which Satan brings you. Satan gives his believers suffering, pain, distrust, destruction of relationships, curse, grief, and depression. And he is thrilled about it because his followers have become his slaves. But these people blame me for not listening to their prayers. 
they are not aware of the fact that they have become the enemies against me, as they follow their flesh and Satan's sayings. I will not listen to their prayers no matter how they plead. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, verses 5 through 8. This means your flesh can become the very enemy of yourself. The enemy is within you rather than outside. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. Carnal thoughts, carnal values, carnal interests, and carnal actions will all take you away from me and eventually sever the relationship with me in the end. Your spiritual immunity to follow me is destroyed by carnal thoughts and carnal greed. This is the heart of wanting to be one's own master, and I cannot live in such people. True triumph comes from discarding the fleshly thoughts and jumping into the river of anointing. What is visible will all disappear, but the invisible will last forever. Therefore, know who the enemy is, and you ought to be unbound from the enemy and walk freely. First, examine yourself what kind of carnal things you might have. I prepare a feast for you in front of your enemy and show the everlasting triumph. The enemy resents for not being able to harm the relationship between you and me any longer. And he is furious to find out that you, whom he assumed as his slaves, are God's precious possession. But the reason he cannot attack you is because I invite you to the table at the festival and anoint you so that all authority and blessings may flow out of you. It is not merely, I shall not want, but the source of blessing is with you to bless you abundantly, and Satan will go crazy because of that fact. But do not be dismayed and do not fear. You originally belonged to me. You had been abducted for just a while, and I brought you back. Therefore, hold the shield of faith to protect yourself from Satan's arrows of disbelief. Do not follow the works of the flesh, but think about the works of the spirit. Then, amazing life of blessings will be opened in front of you. Pastures and highways will be waiting for you. Run to the final moment of the thrilling revenge without pause. The triumph will be accomplished before the very eyes of the enemy. Amen. I ask you to hold my hand to accomplish such life this year. Thank you. In Hebrew, Menuah is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menuah as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamok TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.